and now floor is uh, for 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 uh, for Eva in our from our Latvian office, and she will ask, answer the most critical question: whether we can finally now fix resale prices. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Kapo, for the kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to be here today and speak to you on the fixing of resale prices. Is anything going to change according to the new draft uh, block exemption regulation? If I had only one minute to speak, I would just answer no. Generally, nothing will change in the large lines, but as I do have 10 minutes for my presentation, I will discuss in a bit more detail what is the rationale uh, behind the resale price maintenance regulation currently and still some small details which will change after the adoption of the new draft regulation. And I will close with the uh, short comparison with the US antitrust law and the potential efficiency defense possible also in the European Union. Next. So what is resale price maintenance? It is also known as vertical price fixing and it includes any agreements or concerted practices which established a fixed or minimum resale price or a price level to be observed by a buyer. For example, taking the same example of the coffee seller uh, discussed before, if the coffee supplier says to its uh, distributor that you shall sell my coffee at five euros, full stop, no other options. So that's resale price maintenance. And it's one of the hardcore restrictions defined in the block exemption regulation. And also the court of the European Union has confirmed that it's certainly a restriction of the competition by object within the meaning of the Treaty of the European Union Article 101. So very serious competition law infringement. Um, it can be established in real life through direct or through indirect means. Direct means would be straightforward contractual provisions providing practices that uh, and uh, provisions that um, the price should be at a certain fixed or minimum retail level. So that's a clear cut and very uh, straightforward restriction. However, of course, uh, parties to the contract or to the cooperation may be more creative and also provide resale price maintenance by more indirect means, such as fixing the distribution margin, saying that you cannot apply a larger discount than, for example, 10%, or making the rebates or any re reimbursements of pro promotional costs subject to the observance of a certain price level or even applying certain threats or intimidations or penalties, for example, contractual penalty if a price level is not observed. Next, please. And uh, by is resale price uh, maintenance considered a hardcore restriction? Why is it so bad? According to the explanations of the European Commission and also as uh, established in various cases by the Court of European Union, fixing of resale price is bad because in essence it restricts competition, both intra-brand within a, a distribution of a certain brand and also between various brands. For example, it can even eliminate intra-brand price competition by preventing distributors of the same supplier from lowering their sales price for this brand. For example, uh, returning to the same coffee example, certain brand coffee will cost the same exact price in all the coffee shops. Wouldn't it be boring? It would, and it would also restrict the competition. It can also facilitate collusion between suppliers and it can reduce the pressure on suppliers margin by the distributors. It can even hinder or prevent the entry and expansion of a more efficient new distributor 
thus innovation could be reduced. And finally, within interbrand competition, resale price maintenance can be also be used as a tool by the supplier uh, to enhance its market power and to foreclose smaller rivals. So not good for the competition, and that's why it's a hardcore restriction. Next. This also explains why in large lines, in essence, the regulation will not change in uh, according to the new draft block exemption regulation. Price fixing remains a hardcore restriction prohibited and its legal definition does not change in essence. Next. However, uh, there are some clarif clarifications provided in the draft guidelines on the application of the um, block exemption regulation uh, explaining in more detail what actions and what agreements should not be considered price fixing. Already right now, the block exemption regulation provides that it is allowed to agree on a maximum or recommended price level. So that's fine. So far, if in practice it does not amount to uh, price fixing, for example, if there are no incentives to apply a certain fixed price level or disincentives to lower the sales price. In addition, the new draft guidelines accompanying uh, the vertical block exemption regulation hint that also so-called minimum advertised price policies may be fine. These policies are agreements which prohibit the buyer from advertising prices below a certain level. So on the surface, they may look as price fixing, but in fact, if the buyer is free to apply lower prices than advertised, then it may be fine. Also, the fixing of the resale price in a vertical agreement, uh, which merely executes a prior agreement between the supplier and the specific end user, a so-called fulfillment contract, where basically the distributor is just an intermediary, would not constitute re resale price maintenance if the end user has refused from its rights to choose the undertaking who will execute the supply agreement. So these two examples in, in the draft guidelines, these are new in comparison with the current regulation. Let's move forward. And finally, I would like to draw a brief example with comparison to the United States antitrust regulation because this can provide a broader framework for assessment of the resale price maintenance and also answer to the question, are there any exceptions when resale price maintenance might actually be possible also uh, in European Union? Under the US law, resale price maintenance is not considered unlawful practice as such anymore, although previously it was. However, in year 2007, the Supreme Court overruled the previous case law and hold that vertical price restraints, such as minimum pricing, are not uh, unlawful per se, but rather must be judged under the rule of reason, meaning assessing their actual and practical impact to the competition law. Is anything possible like that also in Europe. Next. In fact, it is. In fact, also in Europe, it may be possible um, to uh, discuss that exceptionally resale price maintenance may lead to efficient efficiencies. Uh, for example, these may be cases such as coordinated short term low price campaign where the supplier agrees with several distributors that for a short specific time, the price should be at the same low level. It can be also a case when introducing a completely new product where fixing a price at a certain level may be an incentive to introduce the public to this new product. 
or also encouraging certain pre-sale services by distributors. All these examples are also mentioned by the European Commission in the guidelines as examples where potentially companies may claim that resale price maintenance may lead to efficiencies, thus legally invoking uh, the Article 101 Part 3 of the Treaty of Functioning of European Union. But we may ask, is it possible even if price fixing is a hardcore restriction? Next. The draft guidelines on application of uh, block exemption regulation confirm that yes, we can. The efficiency defense is possible in relation to the price fixing and it's also confirmed by the com Commission that even if the resale price maintenance is a hardcore restriction and by object restriction as confirmed by European Court. It does not mean that agreements that amount to price fixing are per se infringement. So in all cases and absolutely no. The art and undertaking the companies may argue that at a certain case, price fixing is enhancing the efficiency it may be possible and they may bring forward the efficiency justifications. However, the Commission is very clear that in that case, the evidence must be very specific and concrete, evidencing that in a given case, the fixing the price at a certain or minimum level is necessary and the only means to achieve certain efficiencies which also benefit consumers. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you.